Hello, welcome to Bob's Dungeon. My name is Bob, I'll be your host. And in this video, we're going to continue our look at some vampire stuff. And sort of building off of what I did on my last video, I'm going to talk about a book that gives you some tips and options for your vampire game, particularly Vampire the Requiem, but a knowledgeable game master can easily use any of this stuff in their Vampire the Masquerade game. So what we're going to talk about is Requiem Chronicles Guide. And this book has 192 pages and a copyright of 2006. It was published by White Wolf Publishing and all of the artwork in this book is in black and white. And it's pretty decent. So let's go ahead and look at that artwork. All of the artwork in this book is in black and white. And the artwork in this book is pretty decent as well, with every chapter starting off with a full page picture. And it goes a long way for showing off a good tone and mood for the settings presented here. And with this one picture, I thought up a good campaign setting that it didn't touch on. How would Children of the Corn, who are vampires, sound? To use this book, what you're going to need is, of course, a copy of this book, a copy of the core rules for the first edition, World of Darkness, and a copy of the first edition, Vampire the Requiem game. Now, if you're using the second edition Requiem rules, you'll just need that and a copy of this book as well as as many 10-sided dice as you can get your hands on. Now, this book is broken up into several segments. And the first is just the introduction. But then there is, most of the book is made up of chapter 2, which gives you some chronicle ideas. And I'm going to go briefly over them. And the first thing it has for you is vampiric families. And... This kind of campaign setting is for vampires that share the same sire or grandsire. And it tells you how to break your vampires up into families and stuff. And it's kind of nifty. The second one is my favorite by far. And it is clanless vampires. Meaning you throw out clans and everybody's just a vampire. And it gives you rules for coming up with the weaknesses of the vampires now that there's no clans. And their disciplines and stuff. It gives you some options on that. It also talks about the bloodlines. Now, in Vampire the Requiem, the bloodlines are connected to clans, and you must meet a certain prerequisite before you can be part of the bloodline. And this tells you how to deal with that, either lowering the prerequisites to join a bloodline, or just making the bloodlines like other clans, and you can join them from the beginning. So that's kind of nifty. It jolts you up from having just five clans to over a hundred clans if you got the books with all the different bloodlines in them. So there's that. And then there's one on Becoming, which is a chronicle leading into you becoming a vampire and dealing with your new life as a vampire. Then there's Generational, which is kind of odd, but it goes through different generations as you go. And you start off and you can either do a, a single vampire through different generations or different vampires that are tied back to the original generation. And you're just kind of moving your campaign through time. After that, there is one called The Other, and The Other it focuses on the beast, and it has some different options for you portraying the beast in the game and how it will affect your game, and it gives you different ways to run it like that. And then there's Vampire Kings, which and the stories in your game are supposed to be set around your characters. They're the main characters in your story. But in this, it gives you ideas for going all out and putting them in places of power. The prince, the elders, 
the primage and that kind of thing. Then you have the political and the personal, which is for running a political game and making it more personal for the characters. Then there is procedural, which is kind of like it saying, sounds. It's kind of like a detective thing. You have very skilled characters, and they're working in with, with the procedures of whatever installation they're in. Then you have operic, which is uh, kind of like your classic type of game, but it's instead each game is its own complete story, and they go together. And it suggested that's for groups that don't get together very often, like conventions or something. Then you have espionage, which deals with running a campaign about secrets. Vampires are good at their secrets, and it runs on that, finding people's secrets and stuff like that while keeping your own. Then you have war stories, which is vampire campaigns set in a war setting, which is interesting. Then you have Hunters Hunted, and it's about running games where the vampires are being hunted by hunters, <laughs> be they human, other vampires, or other supernatural creatures. And it has ideas for that. Then there's the Battle Chronicle, which is kind of different from the War Chronicle. Instead of being in a war setting, it's vampires fighting it out and stuff. After that, you have what I've mentioned before, the Isolationist type of game. Where the vampires are in a smaller community and they pretty much make up the bulk of the vampires that are there. Then you have Transcendence, which is a game that focuses on vampires trying to overcome their vampiric state. Think Golconda. Then you have Solo Game, which isn't like what's popular now where people play the games by themselves. Instead, this involves a game master and one player, so they tailor the campaign to be even more personal. After that, you have the last one, which is Monster Garage, which is a campaign based on just making the most scary monster type of character you can. Vampires are monsters. This campaign revolves on them being monsters, and it's got tips and rules for that. After that, there's the final chapter of the book, which is Antagonist. And it goes over how to make some antagonists for your game and some tips for it. It even has some pre-made antagonists that you can put in your game if you wish. And that's about it. It's just a bunch of tips and options for your games, particularly towards the game master and the setting. Which brings me to three questions. What I play a character in a game using some of the options and settings in this game and yes there's some good stuff in here some good ideas to be mined for your game would I run a game using the information in this book again yes I like a lot of the ideas in this game and it, it could bring about some good fun would I recommend this book and yes I would it, even if you're not running a Requiem game, there are some ideas in here that you can mine for your Vampire the Masquerade game. And of course, some of them, you'll have to do some changes to fit it, but it all should work pretty simply. And that's pretty much all I got to say for the Chronicler's Guide for Vampire the Requiem. Thank you for joining me at a look at this book, and hopefully you'll join me next time where we'll talk about something else. Bye!